Hello there, Internet. This is Big K for a producing tutorial. Um, this is my first one, and I have a little cold, uh, so forgive me for that. But anyway, the software I'm going to show you how to use um, for the first tutorials will be GarageBand, mainly because I'm trying to teach from the ground all the way up, like all the way from the bottom to all the way up. Uh, because I don't feel there are enough tutorials on YouTube to teach the very newbie starting producers. Um, and if you have the choice between GarageBand and Logic, which Logic is amazing, but please choose GarageBand just because it's so much easier to get into, whereas Logic is very intimidating. Uh, it's just, it's going to help you get by a lot faster if you just do GarageBand. So anyway, without further to do, uh, started up a new project, my song 31, that's pretty much a clear cut sign for me that I'm not going to actually be uh, <laughs> working on this because I haven't worked on any of my songs, they're just for fooling around. Anyway, um, so if you don't have one now, I would recommend you getting a MIDI keyboard, um, mainly because they just make everything a little bit better. You know, you're gonna have to always draw and move around uh, your notes, but just for figuring out uh, new little variations of, you know, the octaves and all that stuff, a MIDI keyboard is really nice for that, um, just for the creative, creative process. Anyway, uh, down here you'll see you uh, have your time, which is obviously at zero, your measurements, um, your chord, which for electronic music I don't think you'll be using, and your project, which is really nice because uh, you have your tempo right here, which uh, depends on or makes the song faster or slower in short. Uh, and yet again, the key shouldn't really be important for electronic music. Um, anyway, let's just fool around a little bit. I'll show you some of the ropes. Uh, so you're going to want to just record something stupid, you know, da, 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 da. okay, that's, that's that. Uh, if you double click it, it'll pull up down here where you can draw them, uh, fix some of your mistakes like I had many of. Um, now, forgive me if I'm not... Uh, being too crystal clear on it. Just give me feedback on what I should uh, focus more on. I'm just trying to show you the absolute basics right now. So anyway, I have it somewhat in time now. Let's see if I like that. Alright, yeah, that sounds alright. Um, you hear that clicking sound? That's your metronome, which can be turned on and off here. I don't personally uh, use metronome, but if that's your style, then hey, go ahead. Um, anyway, we're going to pull up a new track, which the way I always do it is, as it showed right there, the shortcut Option, Command, N. Do that, it'll ask you what kind. Um, I've never even used electro electric guitar, this little tab. I don't know what it does, really, uh, but... Anyway, uh, this real instrument is for microphones of any kind, whether it be the built-in microphone or um, USB microphone or whatever you use, uh, but it's for real audio. And then this, which is what I use the most of, is just for virtual instruments, um, which is what we're going to pull up. So now we have this little piano, uh, which let me show you, uh, bring your attention to this. This is your loop, which, wow, it's actually... Uh, perfect on this. It just replays over and over again uh, what's in this little yellow uh, section right here. So as long as this is in the yellow section, it'll just keep replaying it. You can make it shorter or longer, um, but for now, this is perfect. So we come down here, and I have, uh, I think it added a lot of my Logic instruments on here. I don't know why. So I'm sorry for that, uh, but this is just for reference, not really a, you know, guide to making, um, 
a particular song. This is just all for reference. So just see, like, all right, so you hear that, you're wanting to get another sound with it, you know. So you're just playing around. No, I don't like that at all, you know. So you want you want to try um, a sub synth bass. I don't even hear that. Oh, there we go. <laughs> um, but no, you don't want that either. So you can uh, just go around. Well, not soloist. I don't even think that's in GarageBand. But you can um, go around and see what what suits you. Um, Try this. Hmm. Kind of like that. Uh, so then you'll see. Um, just go down here, record. And then it's going to be a little bit off, but. That's uh, you can move it, and that's a little bit loud, so I'm gonna turn down. Ah, uh, you can move it, get it to however you want it to sound. All right, um, and make sure you'll notice right there, it was uh, the same length as that, but if I would have just left it right there, oh, um. If I would have just left it right there, I wouldn't have played the whole sound, but if I extend it just a bit, it plays the whole sound. Um, or I could even just make it a little bit shorter, but I'll just do it for the, like that for now. Uh, so we have... Oh, man, that's way off. That could be why <laughs> it's not playing the whole sound. Um... There we go, that works out. Alright. It doesn't sound too good, but like I said, this is just for reference, so we'll use it. Um, now, you saw I turned it down up here because at zero, it just overpowers everything, in my opinion. I don't like that mixing. So, uh, this is your decibels, it controls the, um, volume of the instrument, and this is your master track right here, your master decibels, this will, uh, change all the sounds up or down, but as long as you have the instrument highlighted, you can change that individual sound itself. Um, now also, one thing you're going to want to do as a starting producer, do not First of all, do not leave everything at zero. That just sounds uh, very unprofessional. People pick up on that. They don't know what they're picking up on, but they know something's not right. Um, but also, keep the panning different. Uh, I say never keep it zero, zero, unless um, it's really two different reasons why you would keep it at zero, zero. If it's a bass or kick, uh, that should go at zero. Or if it's a sound with um, tremolo or some other kind of effect that's going to get it from ear to ear. Or if it's just a sound that you want to be at the centerpiece, then zero zero is fine. But do not have lots of tracks on zero zero because what that does is it'll make each track fight for pretty much the sound in the middle. And uh, if you just pan it even one off, it'll sound more professional. Um, so, you can't, more than likely, uh, you can't hear it on this built-in, um, this built-in mic with these computer speakers, but you do definitely want to pin it. When you have, um, when you're listening to it through good speakers or good headphones, you'll definitely hear a difference. Um, so, we also have loops, right? Here, yeah, okay. I don't use this. You can. Uh, but I'm just not a fan of it. And apparently, uh, it's going to take a little bit to load here. Okay. Uh -huh. 
It's a little weird, so we'll just try... See, so it's pretty much, I guess, um, oh, sorry. It's pretty much like a built-in part of your song. That's why I don't like it. It doesn't seem to uh, be as personal, but um, drag it out here. I do believe the bl the green means you can change it. So, if, you know, if I wanted that sound instead of that, then I could um, change it. Let's just see what that sounds like. See, so uh, you can change all the notes. By the way, uh, if you highlight the track itself, um, like what's playing, you can click on the little play and it just solos that track. Another way to do that is click the earphones and you can do that on multiple instruments. So if you want to solo both of these, you don't want to hear the piano, you just want to hear these two. Guys, yeah, that sounds horrible. Or um, in the other way, if you want to hear the piano and the acoustic guitar, but just this is the only track out of all of your tracks you don't want to hear, just mute that one and all the others start to play. Um, and keep in mind, you can mute two of them. You can mute all three of them, but I don't really see the point in that. Um, so you can mute as many tracks as you want to, and you can solo as many tracks as you want to. I could solo all of my tracks and just pretty much have exactly what's playing. Um, and then if we have a blue loop down here, I do believe that's audio, which means you cannot uh, change it. You, you don't have as much customization as you do with the um, blue loops down here. Let's just see what that sounds like. Sounds a little bit more authentic, though, in my opinion. Um, but So that's the loops. And then you have this. I, I wouldn't worry about uh, that, really. That's for sampling. If you want to do it, um, you can get into that later. Or at least that's what I use it for. I use it for sampling. Master Track is over here. Uh, you can give it a feel, which I recommend wholeheartedly. Um, so if you want it to just be a dance, base, a basic dance song, you can do that. And because um, this isn't really basic dance down here, uh, just can't really hear a difference yet again because of these um, crappy speakers. But if you go here, it'll show you what it's doing. I'll get into all this later. Don't worry about this. But um, You'll notice Club Chaos, it has a different setup. Uh, Club Master should have a different setup, and all that stuff. Yet again, that, uh, I'll get into that later. Same thing for the software instrument. The Grand Piano, you can, uh, oh sorry, you can edit that, put in some effects, get into that later. Uh, but I'll say these two right here are definitely your most important in my opinion. So, keep that in mind. But as of right now, it seems like this is a pretty good, just basic um, starting tutorial for uh, GarageBand. If you have any questions, please comment, uh, rate, subscribe. I have a Facebook fan page. You can go like that. And be sure to listen to my songs. Um, tell me what you think about them. And keep posted for more tutorials and songs. Thanks.